There are so many celebrities who regret dating Kim Kardashian. With lies and cheating, she destroyed a lot of good relationships. So here are the top 10 Kim Kardashian ex-boyfriends who still hate her. First up, Kanye West. Kim and Kanye were one of the most hated couples during the almost 7 years that they were together. They took their relationship public in the spring of 2012, and after that it was just mayhem. Kanye, who had been pursuing her for some time, name dropped his future partner in his 2012 single, Cold, saying, and I'll admit, I had fell in love with Kim around the same time she had fell in love with him. By June of 2012, Kim was calling herself a proud girlfriend, and by the end of the year, she was pregnant with the couple's first child, Northwest, who was born in June of 2013. Kanye proposed to Kim in October of 2013, and the couple wed in Florence, Italy soon after. While they were together, Kim and Kanye had more than their fair share of cringy couple moments. Everyone remembers the music video for Bound 2 because it left a lot of people feeling uncomfortable. So during that video, Kanye rides rides a motorcycle through the desert, and he's joined by Kim, who's completely in the nude. In every single shot. Like, every single one. They're either kissing or caressing each other, which is nearly impossible to watch without cringing. And while their relationship was messy, the divorce was even messier. When Kim moved on with Pete Davidson, Kanye was extremely threatened. So one of the things that Kanye did to mess with Pete was he posted a photo of a fake New York Times cover on Insta, with the headline reading, Skeet Davidson is dead at age 28. Then he made a social media post saying, hold your spouse close, make sure they know how much you love and appreciate them, because there is a skeet lurking in every dirty alleyway waiting to help destroy your family. And walk around in Calvin jeans around your children. So after the divorce, it seems like Kanye set out to ruin Kim's love life. Kim and Ray J met when she was working for his older sister Brandy in 2005. Ray said, to be honest, the whole thing started off wrong. We'd known each other for a while before we dated, and there was a mutual attraction, but she was married. She let me know she wanted to get with me, and after that, I kind of felt awkward obligated to be with her. Last year, Kris Jenner went on the Late Late Show with James Corden, where she was strapped to a lie detector and interviewed about the infamous tape that was released in 2007 of Kim and Ray J. Kris denied the years-long speculation that she was involved in its production, and once the results came back, it seemed as though she was telling the truth. Of course, Kim kept up with this narrative too, but neither of them had expected Ray J to respond to the interview. He appeared on Instagram Live with a full presentation to prove that she was lying. He showed screenshots of the text messages that Kanye was had sent him, asking for the original tapes because he had wanted to give them back to Kim. In the messages, Kanye asks if there's a time where the two can meet or talk to discuss the matter further. In a response, Ray J said, I got two kids and a tech company. Why would I involve myself in this? I'm so past this, bro. I'm assuming you know the full story from 05, right? How it happened, who brokered the deal, who put it all together, etc. This is when Ray J made the most shocking revelation ever. He said, Chris Jenner is the one who made us shoot the second tape in Santa Barbara. He then claims that Chris orchestrated the film of the last tape and even watch them to decide which was best. Alrighty, time for Pete Davidson. So this coupling happened on the set of Saturday Night Live. Kim later said that she felt a spark when they shared a kiss during their Aladdin comedy sketch. But people started cringing at the relationship when Kim started spilling a few too many details of their bedroom life. While some people appreciated the honesty, others thought it was a bit too much. Then there was the tattoos. Fans thought it was a huge red flag that Pete had tattoos of Kim and her four kids. Now that they've broken up, it seems like it was a poorly thought out permanent decision. One of the tattoos Pete had dedicated to Kim said, My girl is a lawyer, which he got to celebrate her passing the baby bar. He also got the names Aladdin and Jasmine, with an infinity symbol between them, which is that reference to that first kiss on SNL. And the four children? Yeah, it was the initials, reading KNSCP. But of course, Kim didn't get any cheesy couple tattoos done of herself, and that really says a lot about the differences between them. One of the biggest complications of this relationship was Kanye West. Like I mentioned before, he was just so threatened by the idea of his ex wife moving on with Pete, that he made it his mission to try and make his life hell. As a result, fans felt bad that Pete had to go through all of that, because you could tell it was really putting a strain on his mental health. While it was great that he did stand by Kim during all the Kanye drama, clearly at some point it became too much for anybody to have to put up with. As Perez Hilton reported, in 2017, Kim Kardashian was the very first girl that Nick Lachey was spotted on a date with after his split from Jessica Simpson. It was only one date, but of course, conveniently, they were photographed by paparazzi on said date. Which does does make it seem like it was a PR relationship. One of the editors who commented on the story said, That was one of the early stunts that backfired. We tried to get her to uh, F Nick so she could be a celebrity girlfriend. She would literally bake him a basket of muffins and try to get him to come to her place, and he wouldn't go. So they went to dinner somewhere in the North Valley, and we had paparazzi there. But our paparazzi told all the other paparazzi, so it was a mess. That's their version of the events. But interestingly enough, Kim Kardashian's team denies this, and it's unlikely they would ever admit to one of the relationships being 
fake. Chris Humphreys proposed to Kim on an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians after six months of dating, and the two wed in August of 2011. 72 days later, she filed for divorce. Kim eventually told Andy Cohen that she knew their marriage was doomed during the honeymoon, but she went through it because of the pressure from getting older. She was 30 years old at the time and thought, I'd better get married. That 72 day marriage had certainly shown signs that it was going to end quickly. Like a few days before Kim divorced Chris, I think it was day 68, the couple was spotted arguing in their car while out on a dinner date in Hollywood. The newlywed couple was photographed heading back to Kim's car after dinner, and you could see the tension in the air. Chris looked fed up, and Kim was giving her new husband the death stare while yelling and waving her hands at him as the argument was escalating. This very public fight was kind of indicative that their relationship was on the rocks, because, well, that same year, Kim went to file for divorce and get the marriage annulled. The LA Times even reported that Kim had only married him to increase ratings on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. The best part was that Chris asked for a $7 million divorce settlement from his ex-wife, otherwise he threatened to make her endure an ugly public trial. But the NBA star ended up walking away with literally nothing. When speaking about their marriage, Chris said, Look, I should have known what I was getting into. I was definitely naive about how much my life was going to change. But the one thing that really bothers me is whenever people say my marriage was fake. There's definitely a lot about that world that is not entirely real, but our actual relationship was 100% real. When it was clear that it wasn't working, what can I say? It sucked. Nick Cannon and Kim were briefly an item. In fact, he may have accidentally torched his relationship with Mariah Carey by recounting this fact in 2014 when he said, It's been a lot of people since me. A few months later, it was reported that the admission reportedly humiliated Mariah Carey, and that's when the relationship between her and Nick Cannon never recovered. The two of them filed for divorce in 2014, and that was finalized two years later, but things ended poorly also between Kim and Nick, because the two of them were seen ignoring each other when they turned up at the same fashion event. And in this case, it's kind of clear that she was the one who dodged the bullet. Since 2011, Nick has had 11 children with six different women, and I think he at least has one more on the way. It's a lot of kids. Kim and Reggie Bush dated off and on from 2007 to 2010. There was a bit of controversy about the two of them reuniting, and apparently up until her 2011 wedding to Chris Humphreys, Reggie was still pining for Kim and sending her texts and voicemails telling her she's making a mistake and that he's the one for her. But things between them were clearly not meant to be. A few years later in 2012, Amber Rose went on to claim that Kim cheated on Reggie with Kanye and called her a homewrecker. She said, Kim was one of the main reasons why me and Kanye are not together. Together. She's a homewrecker. They were both cheating on me and Reggie with each other. What an absolute mess. It was reported in April of 2010 that famed soccer star Cristiano Ronaldo and Kim had hooked up during her vacation to Madrid, and they met at an event at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Sadly, by August, he'd moved on, and newspapers everywhere were shooting down rumors that he and Kim were back together. Although it's worth noting that this is not the only sports star she's had a fling with. Kim and Tom Brady have become pretty friendly recently, as it was said that Kim is looking to buy a vacation home in Tom's neighborhood at Bakers Bay and Gulf. Ocean Club. This neighborhood is an exclusive members only residential community in the Bahamas, by the way. She flew to the Bahamas just recently and was spotted touring the resort. A source close to her told Page Six that Kim and Tom are friendly. She phoned him and asked for his advice on Baker's Bay. She's very familiar with the community and she's been eyeing property there for quite some time. Other insiders have since come forward saying that they do know each other, but they aren't involved romantically. But hey, if she moves to the neighborhood, maybe their friendship could turn into something more. It was reported in July of 2010 that Kim and Miles Austin looked pretty happy together. They were canoodling all night. He's a pretty shy and low-key guy, so he's perfect for her. Which sounded promising, but of course, the relationship was not meant to last. And whatever it was, it would fizzle by September, leading newspapers to report that uh, they are not getting back together, they are just friends. And sometimes, that's just the way it ends. And last but not least, it was reported in October of 2010 that serial celebrity dater John Mayer had his eye on the curvy Kim Kardashian, referencing a night out that the pair had with friends to see if they would hit it off. It was reported that the two of them had been on several dates by themselves after the group situation. But clearly nothing came out of that outing, because by May of 2019, John was denying any reports that he was dating Kourtney Kardashian. It's no surprise though, considering the singer is a bit of a playboy. His reputation as a womanizer definitely precedes him, especially with Jessica Simpson. So that couple dated for a year, but they broke up like several times throughout the relationship. In fact, sources close to the couple told people that things were always on and off between the pair and they had arguments constantly. Unfortunately, eh, 2006 marked the year that they split for good. The couple was on vacation in Mexico when photos of them arguing in the balcony of their room hit the papers. Jessica looked like she was in tears as it was undoubtedly a breakup. The news of their split came out shortly after the photos were released, meaning there's a good chance that the paparazzi actually captured the moment when Jessica and John called things off. That's it folks, see y'all here next time beyond the screen.